Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Saunders Social. Um, for those of you who have not um, had a Saunders Social with me, I'm Malika. I'm dialing in from gloomy yet sunny San Francisco, California. The sun just peaked in. I'm very happy just in time. I know the time has changed, so um, I'm holding on to as much sunlight as I can get um, before the clock um, is against me and all of a sudden it turns really, really dark. Um, but I hope everyone wasn't too thrown off this Sunday with the time change. Um, but, uh, we have folks dialing in from all over. Um, and, uh, if you're new to a Sonder social, go ahead and shout yourselves out in the chat. Um, I would love to say hi to you. Welcome to all you new folks. And I see a lot of names that I recognize. So welcome back to all the folks that are returning. Um, I um, am joined by Maya, um, who's dialing in from Denver, Colorado. Um, so she will be popping in the chat, helping you answer any questions. Um, so, uh, oh, Megan, you're from Lompoc. I grew up in Santa Barbara, so not too far from you. Um, and welcome to all you new folks. Um, just make sure the chat does go by really, really fast. Um, and just remember to, uh, grab your journals, grab something to write with, and make sure your chat is set to everyone. Sometimes your chat will auto default to hosts and panelists. So we want to make sure that you're chatting with everybody because that's how we communicate with each other. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, all right. So since we have some new folks, I'll run through um, the guidelines really quickly. Just remember that we want to be kind and courteous to yourself and others. Um, this is not a place for promotions or spam. Um, we want to make sure we respect everybody's privacy. Um, no hate speech or bullying. Uh, limit product questions and accessory questions. Um, and any customer care inquiries you might have, um, send an email to hello at silkandsonder.com. Um, and just remember these Sonder socials are a way for all of us to connect. Um, get rid of those Sunday scaries as best as we can um, and prep for a week together. So I'm very excited to get our week prepped together. Um, you're gonna spend this hour just focusing on setting up your week. So it'll be um, a good productive hour together. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and chat nostalgia. This is this month's theme. Um, so as you heard, I started off the social with one of the songs and one of the artists that is very nostalgic to me. I remember listening to Michelle Branch when I was a little girl. Um, I had an older sister and she loved Michelle Branch. And I just remember like eating hot Cheetos, dancing around to Michelle Branch. So I wanted to play Breathe. I love that song. It's so fun. Um, and I just have a lot of fond memories listening to that song. Um, so um, with nostalgia, we're going to unpack it a little bit in a mind map for our opening activity. Um, and just remember that nostalgia is really associated with positive memories. So I know when we think of the past, sometimes a lot of negative things come up. But for nostalgia, we're really focusing on those warm, fuzzy feelings that we reflect on whenever we are reminded of something from our past. So it may be something very small or it may be something a little bit bigger. Um, it's up to you to decide what that is. Um, and yes, uh, Marianne, it is the first mind map for the month. We're on our first week of November. Technically, we started November last week. However, it was the middle of the week. Um, so this is our first official week in November. So we're going to start off with week one together. So we're all going to start the mind map together. Um, and then we'll move into our weekly setup um, shortly after. Um, and then we'll close out. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start with the nostalgia mind map. And for this exercise, um, typically you can do this on a blank page in your notebook. Um, what we do is um, for folks that are new, we uh, we create a mind map where we focus on the, the monthly theme and we have a focus area for each week. So since you're on week one of November, we'll all start ours together. And um, for week one, we'll have one focus, well, answer a question. And then if you come to each of the weekly setups, we'll slowly unveil week two's question, week three and week four. Um, so that's kind of how a mind map works. 
Um, so you can go ahead and turn to a blank page in your notebook, or if you want to turn to a scratch paper, um, wherever you feel like putting your mind map, that's totally fine. Um, and for this week, we're going to focus on um, when have you found pure bliss or excitement? So when you think about this question, it can be something big, it can be something small. Try to think about maybe, was there a moment where you felt like you accomplished something really big and you were so excited? Was it something really small where it was just very, um, you were just so overjoyed in that moment? Um, it could be anything. It could be a small event. It could be a, a big event, whatever it may be. Think about when you felt like pure excitement. Um, one of the things that popped in my mind when I was thinking about this question, um, I was 18 years old and it's so strange because I'm not a huge sportsy girl, but I remember going to, um, one of my college football games. I went to USC and, um, we had beat Stanford at the last moment and everybody started rushing the field. And it was one of the, one of the moments that stand out in my mind as like a community, everyone getting together and celebrating a victory. And it was just really, really special. And kind of the first time I felt like so much energy in one space so it was very very fun um so that's something that I feel like was very exciting for me um but I will give you all a few minutes to reflect on your um pure bliss or excitement moment um maybe think about the senses that arise when you're in that moment close your eyes maybe to help you think about that particular moment um and I'll check back in a few
All right. Thank you all for sharing um, and reflecting on what that moment is for you. It's so fun to read through uh, what you all type in the chat. It's fun to get a glimpse in your lives and what those moments were that made you feel um, so excited and happy. Um, so I love, and if you have more than one, um, keep going. I mean, it can, it, you shouldn't feel limited. Um, so you can always um, carve out a little bit more space and keep reflecting um, because there are many moments that pop up in our mind that make us feel um, happy just thinking back on it. So um, we will now move on to Rosebud Thorn, um, which is a fan favorite um, at Silicon Sonder. It's one of my favorite things for the week. Um, just reflecting on our our rose, our bud, and our thorn. Um, so you can do this one on, let me just hop over on page 30 um, for this week's rosebud thorn. And what we'll do is we'll reflect on the past week, what's been going well, which is um, some highlight, something that you're grateful for is your rose. A bud is something new that's on the horizon, an emerging opportunity, something that you're looking forward to um, is your bud. And then for your thorn, it's something that may serve as a challenge, maybe something that has been very difficult over the past week um, and something that you're kind of working through. So um, I will reflect, I always reflect on my rosebud thorn um, each week with you all. So my rose for this past week is kind of accepting myself um, and remembering it's okay to be alone. It's kind of a great time to re refocus and shift my focus back on myself. Um, my bud is I have more time to focus on my goals and I'm feeling a lot more motivated to just kind of create the life that I want for myself. Um, so I'm excited for all of that to come forward. Um, and then my thorn is just going through a breakup. It's been really hard to sleep. Um, I'm usually okay during the day, but sleeping has been very difficult. And I wake up in the middle of the night a few times and I'm not really getting good quality sleep. Um, so I just need to kind of maybe do a little bit more focus on my night routine um, so that I can kind of hopefully fix that um, sleeping issue. So um, I'll give you all a few minutes to reflect on your rosebud thorn for the week and um, we'll regroup in a few minutes.
right. Thank you for sharing your rosebud thorn in the chat. Um, I love reading through kind of your rosebud thorns. Just remember that those thorns can, you know, it, it, it does put a damper on our weeks, I'm sure. Um, but it's just a matter of kind of identifying what that thorn is and maybe um, kind of setting up your week so that you can address that challenge a little bit better so, or give yourself a little bit of extra love if you're going through a rough time. Um, but we will now move on. We'll flip the page to page 32 and we will start off with that box at the top, um, which is this week I want to feel. So for this section, um, you can set it up if you want with one word or it can be a phrase. It can really be however you want to set it up. Um, here are some great words that you can use as inspiration. Um, and then once you've figured out what that word or that phrase is, um, here are some examples as well um, for folks who wanna see some examples. Um, write it out in the chat. I wanna know what word, what your intention is for this week of how you want to feel. Um, I see bliss, empowered, effective, attentive, energetic, energized, confident and focused. Um, let's see, creative, joyful, grateful, pain-free, well-rested, tranquil, accomplished, hopeful, ready to create change, calm, productive, um, joy, pain-free, calm and smiley. Um, I put motivated for mine, um, intelligent, sober, hopeful, synchros, oh my gosh, I can't say that word, synchrosity, <laughs> calm, um, productive, focused, amazing. These are all, all really, really great intentions for the week. And I love kind of opening up with the feeling because um, I think it's a great way to identify how we want to kind of go into our week. Um, and now we'll move on to the weekly major three goals. Um, and for this section, I'll walk through a few different ways you can set this up. You can um, definitely use that intention of that feeling that you've already listed above as inspiration. And you can write down three goals to help you feel that word. So for my three goals this week, I'm going to focus on what three things can I do to make sure that I feel motivated. I think that's how I'm going to structure mine this week. Um, but it can also be any three goals, any three things that are top of mind that you want to make sure that doesn't slip from your mind. Um, maybe there are certain things you want to focus on, um, whatever it may be. Um, so think about what those goals are. Here are some great examples. I love how colorful um, people get and how creative people are with their journals. Um, sometimes it's just a black pen and I, so uh, it's always fun to see folks get really creative. Um, and yeah, so this is a great place to put your three major goals. Um, I will give you all a few minutes to write out your three goals and then we'll move on to the to-do section next.
All right. Thank you for sharing some of your goals in the chat. Um, I think it's going to be a good week. I feel like you can accomplish them. So sending all the positive, um, all the positive energy your way for you to accomplish those goals that you've outlined. Um, we will now move on to the to-do list. Um, so for the weekly to-dos, um, of course, you can bullet out your to-do list. Um, I typically default to that, but I'm going to walk you through a few different ways you can set up your to-do list. And if you um, want to try something new this week, go ahead and maybe try one of these methods. Um, so first method is this Eisenhower matrix. It really helps outline what you can, what is urgent and what is important. So you can kind of focus on what decisions you need to make, what you actually need to do, what you can delegate and what you can remove. So for what's not important and not urgent, it's typically those distractions that prevent us from like accomplishing our to-dos. So just outlining maybe things that you want to remove, things that you need to do, um, decisions you need to make, whatever those may be. It's a good way to kind of prioritize the to-do list a little bit. Um, so I love that idea um, for setting up your to-dos if you'd like. Um, I also, uh, you can see my example in the upper right. Um, that is basically when I had a lot going on, I was uh, you know, working my job. And then I was also doing this like certification. And then I had some Slick and Saunders stuff and then just some health goals. I just kind of outlined the category a little bit of like my life and it helps uh, me kind of figure out my to-dos for the week in that way. Um, and then um, I love this example here. They wanted to focus on their physical, mental, and emotional health. So they had a to-do uh, for each of those um, uh, areas. So I think that's a great way to do it as well. Um, and then another idea is a need, want, and hope to-do list. So maybe if you're feeling like you are a little bit more in that dreamy state, you can focus on what you need to get done, what you want, and what you're hoping for. I love this one. I think this is a great one if you're kind of feeling like you just want a little bit more inspiration, um, just kind of making sure that you are focusing on kind of those wants and hopes as well throughout the week. Um, here are some other examples on the right. We have a morning and evening routine. Maybe you want to focus on your morning routine and your evening routine this week, and you want to outline what those are. Um, so that is an idea. And then also uh, you can make your to-do list a bingo board if you feel like making more of a game or a challenge. And then you can use like maybe some stickers or a pen to cross it off as you accomplish your to-dos. That's always fun. Um, and also here's an example of a to-do to-da list. Um, to-da is really giving yourself that extra bit of recognition when you encounter something challenging throughout your week um, that maybe wasn't on your initial to-do list, but um, just giving yourself that recognition that you um, did something and it was hard. Um, it's almost like that gold star um, effect. So giving yourself a little bit of credit when you're going through it, when you did something hard. Um, so these are a couple different examples. I'll swap between both slides as you're working on your to-dos um, so that you have both as reference. Um, and then we will regroup for the habit and activity section next.
All right. Uh, thank you all for sharing how you're setting up your to-do list. I know there's so many different ways to set it up. So I am excited for you all to maybe try something different. Hopefully it works this week and maybe you'll really enjoy kind of setting it up a little bit differently. Um, all right. So let's move on to the habit and activity section. So that's the last section at the bottom that's remaining of this page. And for this section, think about um, kind of some habits and activities that you want to track for this week to feel kind of your best self. So it doesn't mean that you have to do it every day. It just means something you want to give a little bit more focus and attention to this week. So Personally, the way I set up my habits and activities, it really changes based on how I want to feel. Um, I'm probably going to focus on maybe setting it up almost like uh, things I want to do before for my night routine. It would be a great way to set it up because I just have been having trouble sleeping. So maybe kind of outlining a night routine would help me for this section. Um, but sometimes it's usually generic. So it's usually exercise, um, you know, making sure that I'm going outside or disconnecting from technology in the middle of my day for one hour, um, maybe limiting my sugar intake, no alcohol. Those are all some great habits that um, I've put in the past on this page. Um, I love these examples here where um, you can see that on the upper right is almost like a routine, like a checklist, um, which is a, a kind of how I'm going to do it for my week this week. Um, and then for that other uh, habit section, you see um, someone wrote in metrics for because they want to track their weight, they want to track their fruit and veggie intake, they want to uh, track their alcohol intake, um, so that they could kind of see some habits and some patterns that were a little bit more um, data driven, which is really fun. So I love that approach as well. You can get really creative. It doesn't always have to be a little scribble. Um, so um, just remember that when you're setting up these habits, um, give yourself grace this week is, you know, there's, as we reflected on our rosebud thorn, um, there's always going to be, um, highs and there's going to be some lows. And the goal is not to necessarily fill out every bubble. I mean, if you can great, but if you don't, that's okay too. We need to make sure that we're giving ourselves grace as, um, our lives are tend to be a lot more unpredictable and it's totally okay, um, to, uh, just, do the best you can. Um, so I'll give you all a few minutes to outline your habits for the week, um, and then we'll regroup for the next page.
All right. Thank you all for sharing some habits or how you're setting it up. I see some examples of like an exercise tracker, um, a sleep tracker, um, really, really great ways to reuse the section. So um, there's so many habits you can choose from. So um, we will now move on to the next page, which is the meal plan. So we'll um, flip over to the meal plan. Um, don't get overwhelmed. The screen has a lot of different examples of what the meal plan section could look like. Um, obviously, if you are um, really focused on kind of your nutrition and you want to identify your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack for the week, you can definitely use this uh, for its intended purpose. Um, but if you want to repurpose this section, which is often times what people do um, in so Silk and Sonder, is you can put some washi tape over the breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack, and then you can set it up however you'd like. So I'm going to walk you through a couple different examples that you can see on the screen. So you'll see um, the daily affirmations. So you can set up an affirmation. You can get it from the Silk and Sonder app and write it down here. You can also use this section for reflection. So maybe you want a little bit of journal space to reflect on how your week is going. That's a great idea. You can also um, use a section to draw upon the seven types of rest. Maybe you want to feel like you're um, rested this week and you want to focus on the different areas. Um, you can definitely do that. I also have the um, graphic there in case you are curious what those rest, uh, those seven types of rest are. You can also use this section. Maybe you have a big chore that you have to do, but breaking it up zone by zone will help you kind of break it up a little bit better. Um, so you can do that. So it's not super overwhelming. Um, you can also use a section to plan out outfits if you're going on vacation or if you have a trip coming up or if you're going to work and you just don't want to focus on what you're going to wear and like freak out in the morning like I normally do. Um, so that's a great idea as well. Um, and then you can also use a section, maybe you have a lot of appointments coming up to outline some of your appointments for the week. Um, it's a great place to put some appointments as well. Um, so yeah, so that is a couple different ways that you can set up your meal plan section. Um, I'll give you all a few minutes um, to set up your meal plan and type in the chat how you're setting it up for the section. I see a lot of different ideas. Um, ooh, Kimberly uses it for a word of the day section in the definition. That's really fun. Um, yeah, you can definitely get creative with this um, section. So I encourage you to use it uh, to best serve you. Um, so I will check back in a few minutes.
All right. Um, we will now move on to the mind body health plan section. So for the mind body health plan, um, here are a few different examples for this section. So um you can definitely use it as a place to track maybe your workouts that you want to do. Um, maybe you want to have a different um, task for to support you for your wellness plan. Um, I love the different ways people take this. Um, maybe you want to put an inspirational quote. Um, there's definitely fun ways to do this section. Um, and I think as, you know, with the time change and all, I think it's good to remember to focus on our health plans this week, making sure that we don't feel too off track um, and whatever that may be, uh, especially with the colder months. So um, maybe you can think about what is going to make you feel um, all warm and fuzzy while you're indoors. Um, maybe it's also just making sure you get some outside time if you work from home, like myself, whatever it may be, set those intentions to help you feel like you're on track. Um, so I'll give you all a few minutes to set up your mind body health plan and then we'll regroup for the shopping list next.
All right. Thanks for um, setting up your mind body health plan. We'll now move on to the shopping list section right below. Um, and for this section, I have a ton of examples. Um, and it's because everyone does it differently. And it's really a blank box. Um, so if you do have things that you need that you want to like, get from the store, go ahead and list those out. But you can also use this section to really and just set it up however you want to. Um, so I'm going to walk through a few different ways. You can definitely see the examples here. Um, there's so many. You can set it up as a bingo board. Um, you can set it up as your intentions for the week. If you have extra intentions, um, you can put a sticker here. You can put a fun quote. Um, you can kind of put some, I love this idea of a calm scale. So you can identify like how calm you felt for the week, or maybe there's an emotion you want to feel for the week, and you can kind of see how you felt each day. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can really get creative with this section. So I'll give you all a few minutes um, to set up your shopping list section or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll regroup uh, one last time for the I am loving section before we close out. Right. Um, we will now move on to that final section, the I am loving section. So for this section, I want you to maybe sit up or just roll your shoulders back, get comfortable, and maybe close your eyes for a brief moment. 
and really think about what is going well. Um, we kind of started off with the rosebud thorn. Um, so we kind of figured out what was a highlight, but what is something that you're currently loving? Um, and once you've realized that, write it in the chat, write it down um, and tell us what you're loving. Um, I see Nona's loving change, um, having a fab week. Teresa loves my playlist. I love that. <laughs> um, a reflection. Um, oh, Crystal saves. I'm loving section for reflection through the week. I love that. Um, oh, Jonah, thank you. Um, flannel shirt weather. Um, start of the holiday season. Time off from work. Amazing. Um, feeling motivated. Um, being in the office, uh, in one office this week. Awesome. Warm weather. Um, amazing. Get, I get getting back to work, home health, showing up and doing the work. Amazing. There's a lot of things that are going well, that you're loving in your life. And I am so excited that you all have done the hard work setting up your week um, and you will have an incredible week going forward. So I'm very excited um, that you all were here with me. Um, I do have, make sure to share your weekly pages. Um, you can see all those examples are from all of you. And um, I put them in the slides because we get so excited to see how you set up your week and you all are very, very creative. So make sure to send or share your pages with us in Sonder Club. Here are some of the QR codes. Um, my will uh, pop those links in the chat. Um, take advantage of our referral program that's going on, especially during the holiday season. Um, you can gift a subscription to friends that you think would love Silk and Sonder the way you do. Um, if you don't have an annual subscription, um, check that out. You might be saving a ton more money if you do. Um, so make sure to take advantage of that. Um, and then also fill out our survey. Um, that survey is really how we craft our programming. This All this programming is best uh, is for all of you. And so we really read that feedback and make sure we're tailoring our events for what you're looking for. And then Maya also typed, uh, uh, dropped in the YouTube link um, in the chat, and that houses all of our past socials. So if you're interested in something you may have missed, um, go ahead and check that out. You're welcome to kind of review any past socials as well if you're interested. Um, but, and then before I leave, here's also my playlist. I'll drop my link in um, the chat. Give me one second. Um, share, copy link. And there you go um, for folks who want access to the playlist. Um, and we will hopefully see you at the next social. Um, but thank you all so, so much for spending this hour with me. I hope you had a great time. I know I did. Um, and have a great rest of your week. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you next time.
that you believe me When I say this love will be 